So um, today we are going to start a new topic, and this topic um, is going to uh, cover the work and the energy. And we are going to use work and energy theorem um, to do the calculation. So far, we have done the Newton's second law free body diagram, and we know how to use Newton's second law and the free body diagram to get acceleration. Then if we know the acceleration, then we're going to use uh, the equations uh, to calculate the velocity, time, and displacement. So if um, uh, I spend a couple of minutes, review that part will be, we're going to use uh, the free body diagram, free body diagram, and plus Newton's second law. And we get the acceleration. So if the acceleration is a constant, acceleration is uniform, then we're going to use um, the equations. For example, final velocity equals initial velocity plus AT, or we know the displacement that will be X equal to uh, initial velocity plus T, uh, one half AT square, AT square. And or we have the final velocity equal to the initial velocity square plus two times AX. So these three equations uh, said if we know the acceleration and acceleration is a constant, then we can go to calculate the velocity, initial velocity, displacement, or we can solve the time. Then the next question is, if the A acceleration is not constant, what if this is not constant? How can we go to solve the problem? And we are going to use work and energy. So this is another technique to help us determine the velocity if we uh, don't have to know the acceleration. Then to talk about the work and energy, we need to define what's work and what's energy. So here, if we have an object, we have a mass on the ground, we know the mass and we apply a force to the object. We apply a force. Under this force, the object move a distance from here to here. So we know the displacement, suppose it's X, okay? Then let's see. Um, if we have a force and this force, it, exerted on the object, and this object is moving a distance, then we see this force has done some work. If an object moves a distance under a force, then we see the force has done has done work. So this is a definition of the work. Then we need a mathematical equations to uh, describe the work. So how do we quantify the work? We see the uh, the force has done some work, but how much work does it done? So we define the work. W equal to the force times the displacement. So this is the definition of the work. I call this definition of the work. And let's check the unit. The force is Newton. Okay? And the displacement is a meter. So the unit of the work is Newton times meter. This is a unit of work. Um, but we want to memorize a famous physicist. We want to give credit to the, uh, 
person who make much uh, contribution to the work and theory. So we this that guy has a name is Joe. So we are going to memorize Joe. So we just uh, replace the Newton times the meter as capital J. So capital J is a unit of the work. So Newton times meter equal to J. One Newton times meter equal to one J. Okay, this is a unit of the work. And depends on your preference, you can use a Newton times meter or you can use J. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so this is a unit of the work. And the next question is, this definition is only for the case when the force and displacement are parallel. So if the force is parallel to the displacement, then we can define the work equal to the force times displacement. But there is an exception. If the force is interparallel with the displacement, for example, we have friction. Uh, let me draw the diagram. We have the friction. The friction um, is in the opposite direction of displacement. If the object is moving, then the kinetic friction is uh, going to leftward. So in this case, we know the friction is going to deaccelerate the motion. To figure out the difference, we need to uh, figure out how do we use an equation to represent a force who is parallel to the displacement and who is interparallel to the displacement. We need to distinguish these two cases. So in this um, question, we find a solution. That is, we are going to use the dot product or inner product to define the work. So what the question is, what if the force is not parallel to the displacement? So to define um, the general equation, I'm going to talk about the dot product first. Dot product. And we have other name, inner product, or scalar product. From the name, you need to know this product gave you a number of scalar, not a vector. So we define a vector multiplication. If we have vector A, we have vector B, and they are not parallel, so there is an angle in between. This angle is smaller or equal to 180 degrees. So we're going to use a small angle. We don't use a large angle. This is large angle. This is larger than the 180 degree. So um, when we talk about the angle between two vectors, we pick up the smaller angle. <clears throat> okay, when these two vectors has an angle in between, then we define the multiplication of two vector A multiplied by B is equal to the magnitude of each vector multiplied together, then times a cosine theta. The theta is the angle between the two vectors. So this is the definition of dot product. So you can find that a vector dot another vector is a scalar. This is a scalar, it's a number. So we're going to use the dot product to define the work. So the work is defined as the vector force dot displacement. Then you will find that this is equal to force magnitude times displacement times cosine the angle between the force and displacement. So there are three special cases. So if 
the force and displacement are parallel, then we have cosine theta equal to cosine zero degree. So theta equal to zero degree. So the work equal to force times displacement times cosine, uh, cosine zero degree. So cosine zero is one. So the work is equal to the magnitude multiplication. That's all. I found a question in the chat. Do we have a quiz today? No, the quiz is next Tuesday. So you're, you're fine today. So next one, uh, if the force and displacement are end parallel, end parallel, then the theta is 180 degree. In this case, cosine 180 degree is minus one. So the work is equal to minus F times X. That's a negative work. So we will get a negative force. So let's go back to the friction, right? The friction and the displacement are enter parallel. So when we do the work done by the friction, I will be equal to the magnitude of the friction times the magnitude of displacement, then we need to multiply by minus one. So this is a negative work. The third question is if the force and the displacement has 90 degree in between, they are parallel. Then that means theta is 90 degree, then cosine 90 degree is zero. So the work equal to zero. So that means if the force and displacement are perpendicular, then the force doesn't do work. So in this scenario, we have weight goes down used to the gravity. Gravity, let me use another uh, label. Gravity, so Mg, Mg, let me use Mg. That's gravity and the normal force on the object. And the both of this force are perpendicular to the displacement. So if I ask you to calculate the work done by the weight or done by the normal force, then you, can, you should get the work done by this two force is equal to zero. Let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? Okay, if there's no question, let me move on. And um, we have a problem to help you understand how does it work um, calculated by the equation. So this is a problem to help you to ingest uh, this equation. So we have two blocks and the weight is 20 Newton and 12 Newton separately. And it says these two blocks are connected by a string and they move 75 centimeter. And the 12 Newton block move down and the 20 Newton block move rightward. And there's no friction. Okay, then the question is for a 12 Newton block, calculate the work done by the gravity and the tension. Okay, let's do the free body diagram first. For the 12 Newton block, there are two force on the block. The first one is gravity, mg. The second one is tension, goes up. Okay. And tension and the gravity. And it says, the description says, traveling at the constant speed. Okay, I like this sentence because if we have constant speed, that means acceleration zero. So tension equal to weight. The weight is 12, right? 12 Newton. Then let's do the work. The work equal to the force times displacement times cosine theta. That's do the work for the gravity. For the gravity, the force 
is equal to 12 Newton from the description. We know it's 12. And this displacement is 75 centimeter. We need to convert it into meter. So that's 0.75 meter. Okay. This is very important. If you use centimeter, then the unit that you get is not capital J. Okay, how about the theta? Because the gravity goes down, right? And the displacement also points down. So they are parallel. Theta equal to zero degree. Then the work will be equal to 12 Newton times 0.75 meter times cosine zero. This is one, right? Then equal to how much here? Let me do the calculation. That will be 12 times 0.75. That's nine. Nine gel. It does for gravity. How about tension? Tension has the same unit, uh, same magnitude as the gravity. So tension equal to 12. And displacement is the same. This is for object. How about the theta? The tension goes up, right? If the tension points up and the displacement points down, then the degree or the angle between these two vector will be 180. So then we will get the negative work. The negative work will be 12 Newton times 0.75 meter times the cosine 180. 180 is negative one. So we get negative nine gel. Okay, so you can find that if the theta is smaller than 90 degree, you will get a positive number, right? The work is positive, so we say the force has done positive job or the positive work. Positive work. If the theta is larger than 90 degree, then we say the work has done negative work. Okay. This is for the first question. Part B, how much work is done on the 20 Newton block by gravity, tension, and a normal force? There's no friction, so that's zero. And we need to calculate the gravity. Oh, hold on. Is there any friction here? Um, okay, so it doesn't say if there's a friction or no, it just say the pulley is frictionless. It doesn't say the surface is frictionless. So we cannot neglect the friction on the surface. This is surface and friction, we don't know. We need to figure out the friction between the block and the surface. And let's see. Let's do the free body diagram. We have gravity, mg. We have normal force. And we have tension. And we have friction. OK. Because it says traveling as a constant speed, so we need a force to balance the tension, right? If there's no friction, then the constant speed will never happen. So if the block want to move with a constant speed, there should be friction. And the friction is going to balance the tension. So in this case, we have friction equal to the tension and the normal force equal to gravity. Okay, so let's calculate the work. So work, we use this equation, force times displacement times cosine theta. Let's figure out um, the force for each one. Tension, tension is 12, right? Because we get this from the part A, tension is 12. The tension equal to the 
weight of the uh, of the lighter block and the friction equal to tension so they have the same magnitude how about the normal force and the weight we know the normal force and the weight are equal so they equal to 20 newton now we know the force how about displacement the displacement between the block a and block b they connect by a string they don't have relative speed so they should have the same displacement they share the same displacement so the displacement is 75 centimeters so they have the same displacement okay that's fine then let's figure out the, the angle the theta for the gravity the theta the uh, the angle between the gravity and displacement let's see the displacement goes to the right this is the speed that means they are perpendicular okay so for not uh, for the weight the angle is 90 degree and the same thing normal force is 90 degree how about the tension? The tension points right and the velocity points right. So they have zero degree difference and the friction is 180 degree. So we are going to use the equation F times X times cosine theta equal to work. Then we know all the parameter here. Then it's very easy to calculate the work. Okay, do you have other questions? Or you think this is very easy? Okay, then let me move to the next topic. Uh, we said we are going to use energy work theory to calculate velocity. And now we already define the work. The question, following question will be what's energy? What's energy? The energy. We got this idea from many friction um, book, and many people talk about energy uh, in the industry or in the news or in the government proposal. You get the energy anytime, but what's the energy? So how to define the energy and quantify the energy? And you can think about if we talk about uh, a bomb, if a bomb um expose and we say the bomb release a lot of energy but what does energy means can we define the energy so let's go back to newton's second law newton's second law said we have force equal to ma so that's the uh, general definition or the general results if we have a net force then the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. This is generally true. Then the question is, if the acceleration is not constant, we cannot treat the A as a number. They should be a value as a function of time. So in this case, let's use the definition of acceleration in derivative format. That will be the mass times the change of velocity, change of time. Right? That's dV over dt. That's the definition of acceleration. And let's see, because we know if the object is moving, the object is moving, then in a small duration, the duration is dt, small duration. We can treat this small duration as a constant speed. Then under a constant speed, then the small displacement is equal to the velocity times the small duration, right? So the dt, the small duration, could be replaced by a small displacement over the velocity. So we're going to replace the dt with dx over v. So in this case, we have f force equal to m dv over dt, dt is dx over v. Then so let's simplify this uh, equation. That would be mv dv over dx. This is just a simplification. I just move the denominator of v into the numerator. 
Okay, then I'm going to remove the dx by multiply dx on the left side. So we have force times dx equal to mv. Okay, this is a derivative equation, right? Do you know how to solve the derivative equation? If I want to know what's the relation between the force and the velocity, how do we do the integration? Anyone knows? So my uh, expect outcome, expected outcome is force as a function of velocity. So how can I get the force as a function of velocity from this derivative equation? Anyone knows? Um, would it be if you divide by dv on both sides? So we're going to integrate on the both sides, right? Yeah. So let's do the integration. C. Let me do the integration. So because this is a derivative equation, so to remove the derivative, we just need to do the integration. And let's see. On the left side, that's a force times the dx. So it doesn't say the force is a constant, but if we do the integration, the force times a small displacement, then we sum up all the force time displacement. That's the total work. So on the left side, that's the total work done by the force. So let me use W to represent the work. But on the right side, MVDV, that integration will be one half MV squared. And we need to use a newton leibniz equation. The integration will be from the initial velocity to the final velocity, right? So the subscript, uh, the up limit is V and the uh, down limit is initial velocity. So this equation is equal to the final velocity squared times half M minus half m initial velocity square. Okay, so let's check this equation. We have work equal to one half v square minus one half m v zero square. From this equation, it says the total work done by this force only depends on the final velocity and the initial velocity. It doesn't matter how the initial velocity change into the final velocity. It could be a constant change or it could be any dramatic change. It doesn't matter how the v non be, uh, v zero becomes a v. We only care about the initial velocity and the final velocity. Then we use this combination, this calculation will get to the work. So this is very important because the work only depends on the initial state. This is initial state and the final state. This is final state. So it doesn't depend on any states in between or any internal state. So that means this combination is very important and we define this combination as kinetic energy. This is the definition. We define kinetic energy as E sub K one half MV square. So that means the total work is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So this is how we define the energy. The energy here, kinetic energy, depends on the mass of the object. 
and the velocity of the object. If the object has a very high speed, then the kinetic energy is very high. And if the mass is great, then the kinetic energy is also great. So this is how we define the kinetic energy. And the units of the kinetic energy is the same as the work. Energy has G. This is a unit. OK, then let's do a. Uh, uh, let me see, let's do a problem to help you understand uh, how does this equation works. So here, there is a force as a function of displacement. It says, uh, there's a model car, the mass is two kilogram, and the moving direction is parallel to the force. And we're going to calculate the work done by this force from x equal to zero to three, x equal to three to four, x equal to four to seven. Okay, then to calculate uh, work, we're going to use the formula, work equal to the force times the x, and we use the magnitude, then we need to uh, multiply by a cosine theta. Because it says, and the model car is parallel to the x-axis, so the cosine theta is equal to one. So we have force times displacement. But there is a problem because the force is not constant. And from the displacement zero to two, we have many force. So which value is going to pick up? Because the force is not constant, so we cannot just use a simple multiplication to do the work. We have to do the integration, right? So suppose uh, into a small displacement, the car move a small displacement. Small displacement is dx. Suppose the force is constant into this displacement. So the total work, total work will be equal to the constant force multiplied by a small displacement, then we sum them, we'll do the integration. So this is uh, the work done by the force. If the force is not constant, we are going to do the integration. Then you can go to check the formula we derived derive just now. You see on the left side, force is equal, the uh, work equal to the integration of force dx. So we have, same equation, work equal to the force times dx. And let's see, from zero meter to three meter, the force and the displacement has a function like this. So the integration actually is to calculate the area between this curve and the x-axis. So we just need to calculate the area. Then the area of this geometry will be work equal to this is one, this is three, this is two. So we have one meter plus three meter times two Newton over two. So we have four gel. That's the work between zero to three meter. Okay. The second part we're going to calculate the work from three meter to four meter. Where the work is equal to the area between the curve and x axis. But you can find that the force is zero. So the work is zero. Obvious. Then from four meter to seven meter. And we're going to calculate the area. And you find that this curve is below the x-axis. And the force is negative, which means the work is negative. So let's calculate the area of the triangle. Then we have the work equal to two meter times one Newton divided by two, and negative. So that would be minus one gel. That's the work 
down by the force in each segment. So second question, suppose a car has an initial speed that's zero, initially at rest at x equal to zero, then we're going to calculate the speed of the car at x equal to three, x equal to four, and x equal to seven. So we're going to calculate the speed at different points. We're going to use new, uh, the work energy conservation. So the work, total work done by the force equal to the change of kinetic energy. That will be final velocity, like this, final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. At the initial state, the car is at rest. So this term equal to zero. The initial kinetic energy is zero. That's zero. So the work is equal to final kinetic energy. That's very important. So let's see. Um, from zero to three, x equal to three. Three meter. The total work from x to three, from x equal to zero to three, the total work is here, four g. So the velocity will equal to, uh, because we know the mass is equal to two, right? So that's equal to one half times two kilogram times the velocity squared. So the velocity equal to two meter per second. Uh, hold on, hold on. The work is not zero, it's equal to four. Four, then we get the velocity is two. Okay, this is the uh, displacement at uh, three meter, then the velocity equal to two. Second one, at x equal to four, let's see what's the total work done by the force from x equal to zero to four. So the work from zero to four we have to add all the work before x equal to four. So we have four g from zero to three plus zero from three to four. Then we will get the total force four g. So the velocity is equal to two meter per second. So that makes sense because from three meter to four meter, the force is zero. If force is zero, that means acceleration is zero. If there's no acceleration, then the speed will be a constant. At three meter, the velocity is a two. So at the four meter, the uh, velocity is also two. It doesn't change. And the common mistake is when you calculate the work from zero to four, somebody just use zero. Let me just use zero. Then they get the velocity zero. It's not true. Because when we talk about the velocity at, um, at four meter, we need to calculate the total work from zero to four. So we need to add all the energy, uh, all the work from the initial state to the final state. Okay, then we're going to calculate the x or the the speed at seven meter. So the total work is equal to four gel plus two gel minus one gel. From the four to seven meter, the work, the force has done negative work. That's a minus one, right? Yeah, minus one here. So that's three gel. Then the velocity is equal to 1.7 meter per second. And that means the, the velocity decrease that also makes sense because the force is negative. So acceleration is enter parallel to the motion. The acceleration is going to deaccelerate the speed. Okay, do you have any other question? So if you feel confused, let me know. When we talk about work and energy, sometimes if this is the first time you heard about this concept, 
that will be a little bit abstract. But after you are familiar with the work and energy, then you will find this is easy to help you to solve questions. Next one, go back to another question. Uh, spring force. The spring force is different from the kinetic energy because we it's very hard to define the speed of spring. Right? Um, so let's see. If we have a spring at rest, then there's an initial length. This is an initial length. Initial length. Then if we stretch the spring, the spring will be stretched with extension. The extension is delta x, that's displacement. So the total length of the spring will be initial length plus the displacement. I can use x. Use L0 plus x. That's the displacement of spring if we give a stretch force. And you'll find that the displacement has a linear relation with the force. If we increase the force, then the displacement will increase. That's a linear relation. So we can use the equation um, to connect the relation. That is the force. Oh, hold up. Okay, I'm back. So there's some technical problem. Um, so the force is linear relationship with the x. So force equal to a constant times the displacement. This is the spring force equation. Okay, so that means if the, the force, we have a stretch force, then the displacement will increase. If we increase displacement, the force will increase. Then let's see. If we want to stretch three centimeters from a regional, how much work should we done? If uh, displacement is stretch How much work should be done? And let's do the calculation. The work equal to the force time displacement. And the displacement and the force are in the same direction. So the cosine theta is one. Then we're going to use the force times x. But you need to know, because the displacement change, the force will change. The force is not a constant. So we cannot just simply multiply these two vectors together. We have to use integration. The force equal to kx. So eventually, we get the work equal to 1 half kx squared. So I think you need to familiar with this integration. Um, if you feel confused about this integral, uh, please check your calculus book. And you will do this integral many times during the rest of the semester. So if the force is not constant, then we're going to use integration. And the force has a relation with displacement. That's a kx equal to force. So the work equal to the integration of kx times dx. This integration gave us a result. That's one half kx squared. Okay, if we have this relation, then you will find that and the work from the description is 12 gel and the displacement is three centimeters. So let's use 0.3 meter. Then we can solve the k. The k should be very large. Okay, let me do the calculation. That will be 12 gel times 
times two divided by 0 0.03 square. Then I got 26, hold on, 2.7 times 10 to the three, uh, 10 to the four, sorry, 10 to the four. How about the unit? The unit we know the force has Newton. The displacement is meter. So the unit of K is Newton per meter. That's Newton per meter. This, this value is very large. And you can find that if I want to stretch one meter of the spring, I need 2.7 times 10 to the 4 Newton to stretch one meter. That means the spring is very hard. Okay, so this is a constant, spring constant. Second one, what's the magnitude of force is needed to stretch a spring three centimeter from its unstretched length? That means if the displacement is three centimeter, what's the force to stretch it? The force equal to Kx. K we know is 2.7 times 10 to the four, multiplied by the displacement at 0.3 meter. You need to figure out all the unit is correct. When you say centimeter, convert it into meter. Okay. Then we get the force. Let me do the calculation. That's 800. Okay, so this is the part B. Do you have any question? So next of two questions will be the same procedure. How much work if the displacement is four? So we're going to use this formula, one half kx squared and x is 0 0.04. And what's the force needed to compress this distance so we have force equal to kx, x is equal to 0 0.04. We just use this formula and you get the, uh, the solution. Okay, so let me give you a short summary how to use work energy conservation to do the calculation. So this theory is developed to solve a question how can we calculate speed if the force is not uniform? So we're going to calculate the total work. If we have the total work and we know the initial velocity, then we're going to use the kinetic energy to solve the velocity. Right? So total work equal to the change of kinetic energy. And if we know the initial velocity, that means we will know the initial kinetic energy. Then we can go to solve the final kinetic energy, then we solve the final velocity. And you find that the work is total work from the initial state to the final state. And the total work only depends on the initial velocity, and the final velocity. It doesn't depend on any velocity in between. So this is how we use work energy conservation to solve the problem. So I've done today.